Phil Jones, and I'm a street photographer from Chicago. Going back to, you know, elementary school and middle school, I would get film cameras as a Christmas present, like every three or four years. Took some photography classes actually in high school, which were actually filmed. So how to, how to develop and everything, which I've completely lost that aspect of photography. But there's always kind of been there. I've just never prioritized it. After graduating from college, I took my first trip overseas and wanted to get a camera for that. So I got a little Sony cyber shot you know started shooting just for myself so it's just to like put travel photos online and then that was really all i used my camera for for travel then kind of fast forward to 2015 2016 i was frustrated at work it was a tough job i wasn't happy and i was just looking for new hobbies and kind of rediscovered photography indirectly through starting like a little travel blog that i think only like like three people, my parents were two of them, um, actually read. In the process of doing that, I'm like, you know what? Like, this is not gonna turn into anything, but I should get a legit camera to try and improve the quality of my photos for this little blog that I was doing. Got an entry-level Canon T6i, and I, you know, went on my first trip with that thing, had no idea how to use it. And in the process of kind of developing that tiny little blog, Wandering was kind of like, sounded good, Wandering Jones was how I thought of myself at that time with a little travel blog and, and really, like average photos and I just kind of kept that name even as my photography took over the blog is like long gone but photography stuck like for whatever reason on this camera I treat it almost like film sometimes I'm like one click yeah one click I mean I still kind of rapid fire it but we're going down yes sir that's kind of a cool This is, this is fun. This is the fun part of. Make sure you include this entire session right here. Good, good. Go, no, go ahead, please. Sorry. Street photography started shortly after the blog, probably 2017. I discovered some Chicago photographers and they're taking these really awesome urban and street photos. And it was just like this entire world that I had just been ignoring for years. So took the camera out. It started probably with things like shooting trails at nighttime, cityscapes mostly. It just kind of slowly morphed into consuming content either in photo books or through Instagram or other other sources and just kind of like gauging what I like. I slowly discovered more and more of the street photographers out there. This was just a little bit probably before the pandemic hit and I was going out more and more at nighttime, capturing that mood that was appealing to me at the other time and just trying to emulate these other photographers. Yeah, then COVID hit, we moved outside of the city. I had a kid and that was a lot of life changes right at the same time. I was worried that the added distance was going to be a problem for shooting. It ended up working out great. I would put my kid to bed. The only time I could get out then was after bedtime. So I would just continually go out at nighttime, which I ended up loving. There's an anonymous aspect to it, both from me as the photographer, but also people out in the scene, silhouetted scenes started to become something that I shot a lot that just kind of blossomed into a weekly routine. I think I saved up for like eight straight months to get like a Sony a7R 3 and I couldn't afford a lens for it. So I'm still shooting on this Canon. I've got my brand new Sony sitting on the floor of my closet with no lens. After a little while, I got it like a nifty 50 just so I could get out with that thing and shoot. And that was kind of, that was a nice surprise <laughs> change moving up to that. And uh, I just kind of like went on from there and that became kind of like my style night shots. Since then I've kind of progressed into some other things. Stand clear. 
clear of the closing doors, please. If I'm doing nothing, I, I feel like I need to look cool, though, you know? Jay, Jay knows everything about being cool. It's natural. It comes natural to yeah, Jay. I have to work at it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Oh, yes. I think I got this kid running through. Red and red. Not bad. I think that guy was starting to yell at me and I just walked away. <laughs> I mean, yell. Not too bad. I feel like I need to be more incognito in Chicago. You can just get away with more here, but I don't know. Once you do meet somebody who's not happy about it, it might be worse here. As I started exploring and wanting to go beyond those, you know, nighttime, low light, silhouetted, moody shots, that was when I really started exploring other photo books and looking at some of the, the greats like Ernst Haas. And I've got one of my photo books back here that was really inspiring. I specifically got his book called Subway. It's Bruce Davidson. When I started shooting the trains a lot, I somehow just stumbled across some of his works and that book is incredible. It's inspired a lot of my shots, not necessarily any specific shot, but the way he he kind of had, in some instances, like a, almost a Bruce Gilden thing where he had a camera with a flash on it and he's getting in people's faces on the subway. But yeah, I just started going through those and just trying to yeah look for inspiration anywhere. But yeah, photo books is a, is a big one these days. Every time I go out shooting with other folks, I see like someone, they take photos, and they look at it and I don't do that at all. I usually shoot and I don't look at it. Sometimes I do, but I don't look at the photos in initially. So getting home is kind of my way to discover those like aha moments of, oh my God, I nailed this one or, or the flip side of that of, of not catching one you thought you had. I don't know, most people consume beat photography this day through probably social media. The way I noticed that the way it looked on my computer never quite looked the way it came out after posting it on social media. Anyways, all this just to say that about a year ago, I just got an iPad and I have the mobile version of Lightroom on that iPad. And that's how I do all of my editing now and everything syncs, you know, every time you open your catalog and whatnot on your, on your desktop or your laptop. And it's kind of been a game changer for me. It's made editing a lot quicker. I can edit on the train, on the way to work. I can, can edit while my wife is watching TV on the couch and I do my own thing. I use the iPad. I feel like the colors match closer to what then comes up on my phone so that what people are seeing when I post to threads or Twitter or Instagram looks very close to the way that I edited it. It gave me more time to edit, I think. So I've really been playing with my color grading in the last probably six months and really gone heavy. I hate to say the word cinematic because I feel like it's kind of overused in the street photography world, but it's really helped give me time back to play around with colors and really exp experiment with color theory, do some things that I probably wouldn't have been doing if I was still sitting at a desk um, on my laptop. All these people yeah. for the, damn, it's a big it is? Yeah. Okay. That seems like a lot of people. So in my heart, I am still a nighttime shooter. And just like every other street photographer on the planet, probably, I thoroughly enjoy a good rainstorm, snowstorm, fog, that type of thing. But outside of that, I've tried to mentally just be okay with whatever the weather gives me that day. I certainly like sunrise, sunset more than like say a blue hour or something like that. I just like that low light, especially in Chicago, New York too, getting up on a train platform where you get a little bit of elevation where light can kind of peek through buildings around sunrise or sunset and just getting really interesting shadows. I don't go out specifically with a composition in mind. I just kind of like go off feeling. I want my images to create some type of emotion with the viewer, but that's only going to happen if I'm also also feeling some type of emotion when I'm shooting and those those hours when the light is really low on the horizon which again most photographers <laughs> that's like a good time for all of us we like that low light I've really become fond of that which is obviously 
quite different than shooting nighttime isolated figure shots. It's it's more about placing people in pockets of light, composing maybe a piece of light here, a piece of light there, something different going on. It doesn't always work out that way. Like I said, I don't have a particular composition in mind when I'm out shooting. I've become more comfortable just taking whatever the scene gives me. You call me? Oh, my bad. I'm gonna try and get somebody with uh... Can't lose the hat. <laughs> Get a good butt shot. Yeah, a little bit of a bent. <laughs> memory card full it's okay the one city that I really want to shoot that I have not shot before is actually a city that I've been to but it was prior to me kind of taking up photography seriously and that'd be Tokyo even going broader than that Asia in general is a place that I, I really want to shoot like Hong Kong uh, Tokyo maybe even Taiwan or something like that those are places it really is culture shock coming from Midwestern United States and I did visit Tokyo one time I I had a long 22 hour layover where I just went out with my iPhone at the time. I took a lot of photos, but I was traveling solo. I took a bullet train into the city, went around with my iPhone. It, it just, I mean, that's not the same thing as um, taking like a, a camera around the city and really getting to document it. So definitely I, Tokyo, but also Paris goes beyond your question now, but I visited Paris. Paris was my first trip overseas and I fell in love with that place and I've been a number of times since but again never with street photography kind of as something that I'm doing regularly so Tokyo then Paris <laughs> I was like who is this guy coming around but you mean shoot from down there the train coming back this way yeah you're why should we walk down there sorry Who knows? <laughs> My viewfinder isn't even on. It doesn't work. There were a couple of photographers from New York in town, or in Chicago, and we were out shooting nighttime. It was summer. We were around the theater district. Most people are familiar with the big Chicago theater sign. There's a, a famous uh, Instagram famous platform over there where you can see the sign. We were below that and uh, just shooting around and some guy who had one of those like Zippo lighters that was like a butane lighter. So it had like a really strong like flame that comes out, not just like a little flame. And uh, I don't know, he saw my camera, he came over and I kind of like turned away. It just felt, didn't quite feel right. He was trying to light my backpack on fire. Quinton, who was the one of the other people that I was shooting with, he's from New York. He came over and he's like, yo, he kind of like jumped in and I spun around and this guy's like coming at me with this like porch flame kind of like shooting out right at me. I was just like, uh, and like, a couple people kind of jumped in. He might not have realized that we, you know, fortunately had like a group of people. It was like three or four of us. I, I don't know. It, it wasn't like anything specific that I said or that anybody did, but just kind of like tried to diffuse it and then immediately walk away because that, that was like a very strange one. I haven't had too many like that.
Go down this way. In the off chance somebody pops into one of these windows in the next 30 seconds, I'm ready. <laughs> Which won't happen. Should we do, should we go to, yeah, Soho, Soho? Let's just do it. Yeah, <clears throat> new spot. It was in December, maybe a week before Christmas. It was pouring rain that, that night. This was literally one of my first shots with that lens. The Chicago theater is what's providing most of that backlighting and it's off kind of to the front left behind the subject. A lot of the street lights have this really, really yellow orange glow, which can cause a lot of problems in post-processing, but you can also use it to your advantage. And I just kind of went with that orange on this particular Shot, and I just waited. I mean, I was just like standing in the pouring rain. It was during the early pandemic days. There weren't a lot of people out. I had to sit here probably 20 minutes for each person just to walk by. I just caught a good umbrella uh, at the right time. And it's actually, it might be hard to see, it's actually two people, but they're perfectly, they're like the same size <laughs> and they're perfectly stepping in line. So it almost just looks like a single, a single person. It was a point where I I wasn't really sure what I was shooting and that kind of solidified that early style I had of dark, moody, atmospheric types of isolated figures. This was shot in the summer. I was going in kind of an area around the Chicago River that I don't normally shoot in. I think when looking at it, it might look like this guy's shadow on the back, but it's actually two people walking together. So it just, it looks like a mirrored image with this guy in his shadow, but it's really just his buddy that he's like walking home from work with. I just kind of got lucky. I don't I don't even know if I thought, oh, I'm going to wait for two people that look exactly the same and hope that one of them is in the light and one of them is three feet behind. It wasn't like that. It was just kind of like, it's a perfect example of one of those really, really happy discoveries when I came back and uploaded my photos and was kind of scrolling through them. And I was just like, okay, that's cool. Oh my God, it looks, it's just interesting to me. Kind of like almost miss those, that little nuance of kind of the mirrored image if you're just kind of scrolling through it you're like a oh, cool silhouette so those little nuances and and often happy accidents just feel like that much more exciting and yeah so i, I really like that about that photo so this would be a, a photo that I would say is unlike my style for the orange umbrella. It was early morning. I turn around and there are a couple of teenage girls getting ready to sprint across the streets. And they were dressed in like full traditional Amish wardrobe. And it's just such a interesting juxtaposition of like big city vibes with stepping back in time. I didn't have time to like really hone down my focus on it. If you look closely, like the picture is even a little bit blurry. I think I only took one photo of them and just hope that it came out. But I just like it. It's an interesting scene that you don't see every day. It also happened to be around the time shortly after I probably got my Fuji and around that time I started shooting a lot more horizontal so if I was still shooting with my Sony I would have been like uh do this and try and you know do one of these things the picture lends itself better to being kind of landscape yeah that's the one that I I really like kind of from the early days